My dear fellow pro-life friends and leaders, you have been at the heart of fighting the most virulent form of abuse of human rights that we know. Because you've been smart and true to the cause, able to discern distractions from true steps forward, we now stand at a moment of pure potential and possibility for life. Now, while we've made great progress through blood, sweat, and tears along the way together, powerful voices have said all along, you can't. You can't change the Republican Party so they prioritize life in their leadership, in their elections, their presidential primaries, their legislative plans. You can't convince academics to risk their careers to testify on pro-life legislative plans. You can't decide a congressional race. You can't win a statewide race. And for heaven's sakes, you know you can't tip the presidency. You can't make life a guiding priority for the President of the United States of America and his staff. Those voices came from our opponents and even some of our friends who doubted and said, you can't, it just can't be done. Now, all other successful human rights battles in American history have heard those words and overcome them. And they've gotten to a tipping point very similar to the moment in which we are living now. At the beginning of 2019, the pro-life movement is in the strongest position yet since Roe v. Wade. The 2018 midterm elections were a clear win for our cause, and the stage is set for unprecedented gains this year and beyond. Ahead of Election Day, Susan B. Anthony List visited 2.7 million voters, educating them about the candidate's record and the stakes of the election for unborn children and their mothers. The result? Pro-life voters delivered victory in Senate battlegrounds, statewide races, and in referendums. The Senate, once again, has a pro-life majority. In 2010, there was not a single pro-life woman in the U.S. Senate, and now the new majority includes five strong pro-life women leaders. Pro-life candidates won or maintained governorships, defeating abortion extremists in states that will play a critical role in 2020. Iowa, Florida, Ohio, and Georgia Voters in West Virginia and Alabama passed popular initiatives to stop taxpayer funding of abortion on demand and strengthen protections for the unborn. We should see these victories for what they are, an affirmation by the American people of President Trump's pro-life agenda and a rejection of the extreme status quo of abortion on demand up until birth imposed by Roe versus Wade. Now halfway into his first term, President Trump is the most pro-life president in our nation's history. He and his administration took immediate action to stop U.S. exportation of abortion around the world on taxpayers' dime. He announced the Protect Life rule to stop Title X family planning dollars from being funneled to Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. He also rolled back Obama-era policies that forbade states to use their own tax dollars to fund life-affirming health care options instead of abortion businesses like Planned Parenthood. We are part of a transformation of an entire court system right now. President Trump has given us two outstanding Supreme Court justices in Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, and 85 judges confirmed to lower federal courts, and more vacancies will arise. But there are setbacks. We face the reality of a divided Congress. Nancy Pelosi and the pro-abortion Democratic majority in the House of Representatives have made it clear from day one that their priority is propping up the failing abortion industry and attacking President Trump's pro-life policies. We must fight for crucial pro-life policies like the Hyde Amendment, but never settle for merely playing defense. We will go on offense again by winning the presidency in 2020, protecting our allies, and expanding our pro-life majority in the Congress. We will build on success and continue working with our state allies to enact laws that challenge Roe's regime of abortion on demand and hold promise for opening the door for humane abortion law in our nation. Furthermore, we must continue reaching women and men with compassionate support, growing and strengthening the network of loving alternatives, pregnancy centers, abortion pill reversal, adoption, post-abortion healing, and more. A groundbreaking report from SBA List research arm, the Charlotte Lozier Institute, found that our nation's pro-life pregnancy centers served more than two million people in 2017 alone. Our movement is grassroots, diverse, youthful, energetic, and thriving. 
We approach the battles of the year ahead with confidence that life is winning in America. I want to close by saying that everyone who said and says we can't is right. Another common bond of successful human rights movements in our history is the core of faith at the center of each of those movements and certainly at the core of the pro-life movement. In their weakness, they were aligned with the weak and they became strong. And that will be true of us. We will be strong in our weakness. If, no I mean when, we prevail, it will be because we are servants to Him, to the cause and one another. We will be victorious because we know and believe in the one who makes all things new, the one who transforms no into yes, can't into can. And that will require us to keep our eyes on the prize every single day together, to be leaders at this critical moment. We must act like we know what's at stake, because we do. Each one of us must be a leader, not a follower. It is time not just to organize around abortion, it's time to end abortion. We are closer now than ever before. I invite you to visit our website at sbalist.org where you can sign up to become a member of the SBA List team as we fight together for an America where we protect unborn children and their mothers in the law and abortion itself is unthinkable.